the final episode of season two of Heels has aired. So let's talk about season two. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Heels Season 2. Now, as we go into this, I'm going to start off with my general spoiler-free thoughts, just in case you haven't seen the show, you might be interested in what I think about it. And then in the back half, I'll kind of go into more specific details about my feelings on this season and giving spoilers as I go through all of that. With that said, let's get started. And right off the bat, I thoroughly enjoy this show and the second season of this show. Now, I'm not like a professional wrestling fan and I never have been. Not a hater. I've just never really kind of connected with it the way other people do and the way that I do with other things. But I was a big fan of Arrow and my close personal friend that doesn't know my name, Stephen Amell, chose to do this show after finishing his time on Arrow. So I thought I'd give it a chance when it originally debuted, checked it out and really enjoyed it. It felt to me kind of like a grown-up version of Friday Night Lights. Now, Friday Night Lights, when I say that, I don't mean as if that's a kiddie show, but that show is about high schoolers and a coach, and this is about grown-ups. And I feel like Heels kind of taps into that same sort of vibe where it's a sports show, but it's really about kind of the drama of all the per people's lives. Even kind of the use of the, the soundtrack with explosions in the sky on Friday Night Lights, they choose a similar aesthetic, musical aesthetic for the theme song of Heels. And uh, as someone that lives in Central Texas and can hear Friday Night <laughs> Stadium and see the lights from this window right next to where I'm at, uh, I really enjoyed that show and really enjoy this show as well. And there was some production issues that kind of delayed the release of the second season. There were some acquisitions between what company produced Heels and then which one distributed it. And it was on Stars, but acquisitions, there's all sorts of trouble. And finally, season two came out in July with very little marketing. And then in the middle of the actors strike, so the actors can't do anything to promote it. So there wasn't much of a, a splash when it came out. It was like, oh yeah, that, that came back, didn't it? Oh yeah, there's a second season of that show. So I was a little bit late to check it, to checking it out and very quickly got heavily invested in this show in season two. And what season two, I think, does really well is I think it finds a way to maintain the drama of the first season where there's always setbacks, conflicts, big revelations that rip your heart out. But in season one, so much of the conflict came from making the characters just so pig-headed, so self-involved that the show is kind of addictive, but it also kind of made the characters really unlikable. It was tough to root for anyone when everyone is treating everyone else so badly. But it was addictive and there was just something to it that kind of worked. And I think with season two, they found a way to give some of the most broken characters in season one these redemptive arcs. And then also, they make so much of the conflict come either from external sources or from the trauma of their past. And by doing that, they're able to create a series of episodes where it has these big moments of triumph. You feel victorious in every episode, but then there's always a final reveal, some final action that's just a gut punch when there's one more piece of information, one last thing. So you end every episode like, oh, oh, no, no, why? So many episodes. There's just this final line of dialogue, this final moment. You get a reaction from an actor that just rips your heart out. And so I think that's what this season did. Season two did really well is kind of finding a way to adjust the way that it delivers the drama, the tension. And the characters are just as flawed as they ever were, but it's framed in a way it's done in a way 
that makes it so you realize those flaws are growing out of the pain of their past, things that happened to them. There's a reason behind it, not just that everyone is self-involved jerks. I think that made season two, I think I'd say better than the first season. Now, I didn't rewatch season one before watching season two, so maybe it could be riding on the wave of the emotion, recency bias. But I was frustrated by season one in a way I wasn't frustrated by season two. Season one just amped up the tension by making Ace so difficult. Having all the talent in the world and just being such a jerk to everyone that it made him frustrating. And then even the things where he pushed people away and just made everything frustrating because he was just such a jerk. Whereas this season, so much of the conflict, it's Goalie. And Goalie's supposed to be a villain on the show. But even Goalie, they keep giving us the glimpses of him outside of his interactions with Jack. And all of a sudden, he's not such a bad guy. So even the villain of the show, Goalie, I mean, he's not actually a villain. He's just a shrewd businessman that's difficult with the competition. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you like that Friday Night Lights vibe, certainly if you like professional wrestling, if you like Stephen O'Mell, definitely recommend checking this out. From there, let's start talking specifics. So season two picks up right where season one left off. Crystal has the belt. Ace has taken off, having learned everything Jack did to him. And the DWL is on top of the world because the fair show went so well. But... Also, the season starts off intentionally slow by flashing back and making it clear this season is about all the trauma that set the stage for season one of we're going to spend a lot of time King Spade and how he lived his life, parented, the way he handled the finances of DWL, and then, of course, his suicide, how that just jacked everybody up, just messed everybody up. And so it didn't, it didn't, there, didn't there kick off with like a big splash, but it kicked off with quite a bit of emotion to it, trying to unpack that. And I think what, what, what it was able to do is after a few episodes of adjustment, do kind of a real big course correct to create this scenario where the plot of our second season is a redemptive arc for Ace, where after he goes off on his own for for a few days and is just so lost outside of his family and has no clue what he's doing, once he has finally hashes it out with his brother and like owns, I'm a jerk, I'm a jerk, he starts trying to turn back and be a better person. And... On the one hand, I think it, it's left Ace kind of like this this lost character that's overcorrecting from totally self-absorbed jerk to having poo thrown in his face by old men and being like, it was great. I'm helping people die. And you can tell like that's not sustainable either. So you're kind of waiting to see like when is he going to balance out? What is the balanced out version of Ace going to be? But it makes it so that Ace doesn't just feel like this just insufferable person that you want to fail miserably because he's finally stopped only thinking about himself. Not quite as uh, fun of a character this season in that sense, because the guy that shakes things up is, is a little bit more fun to watch, but also not making all of just the frustration that came with him being a total jerk that just snaps a guy's leg because he's in a bad mood one day. And then our big arc for Jack is you're really realizing what makes him tick and how much, you know, spent his life trying to like earn his father's approval and like looking up to his father only to realize all of that was, it was fake. It was a show. The DWL has always been a mess. The finances are a disaster that have sabotaged everything moving forward. And instead of his dad facing that and dealing with it, uh, he kills himself. Um, he never trusted Jack to help him during his lifetime. 
even though season two makes it pretty clear that that Jack is better at most of this than his dad was. And if his dad had trusted him, they probably wouldn't have been in this mess and could have course corrected a much sooner. There's a note that his dad left to him that, you know, for, for all this time, Jack's wondering, what did my dad say? What did my dad say? Some final words of encouragement. And even his final words weren't encouragement or anything like that. It was literally just, hey, now take care of your brother. Even then, it's just, hey, your brother, the one with the talent, but without the persona, like without the ability to control himself, you go watch him, go take care of him. It wasn't even final words of anything like that. It was just look over your brother, just making all so clear that he didn't value Jack, despite Jack being there all along to do the right thing. And so you're just on that journey with him as he's trying so hard to like make this thing work while constantly being reminded of the pain of his father and his father's choices and his father's actual legacy, all leading up to um, several different things that kind of happen in the last two episodes. But so Jack's wife starts digging into the finances, realizes, oh, crap, this is bad. And you have the next to last episode of the season that kind of finds a way to just have this big victorious moment of like, accepting that there's only so much that they can do and trying to wow people. They didn't show up. We cut this great trailer and you just feel like he's having the coming, like really loves what he's built and so proud of what he's built. And as a sit down and like, everyone's so happy. It's like, this is just, this, things are at a great moment, but his wife just, just, she's just learned too much bad information that she just can't keep it hidden any longer. And so she has to tell him, everything going on with the finances and how it's it's bad and all of the hope that we have it could come crumbling down despite we've done everything to earn our place here and it might come crumbling down because of what he did in the past and i got my alarm going off meaning i have a phone call in 10 minutes but so like has this moment and he just has like this one line at the end of the episode i hate him Something, some version of that. It, and it's probably the, the, it's, there's not a lot to it. Probably the best moment Stephen Amell has ever had as an actor. And then followed by a bunch of fantastic moments in the next episode. But it's like just such a, there's so little there for him to work with. Because it's just one short sentence, one sentiment. And, there's so much, so many layers to what's going on in that moment because he's so happy from the day. His wife's telling him horrible news. And he's just able to like make it such a gut punch with this the look on his face and delivery of a very simple line. And it's not, you know, you we you normally think of great big, great performances. It's it's the ones where they're just lashing out big emotions because they flashy and they stand out. There's something really powerful about a simple emotion that communicates so much while still being restrained. That's what he does. And that's like one of those moments where you go, I, I, I only watch heels because of Stephen Amell. Just liked it, liked Arrow. Just thought he did a good job on there. But, you know, CW acting, CW writing, a CW superhero show, what you, you do in that context where you emote the opportunities given to you are different than a show like this that's supposed to be this grounded family drama. As so I guess this moment to really show what he can do. That was real powerful. And then you go into the next episode and they just once again kind of have the flashback to his father telling him what he's not able to do and what he shouldn't do and... Um, you know, doubting him, like, just, you're this, this is what you are, not this. All leading to that big, gigantic show, goes fantastic, and Jack decides, it went, well, I mean, even before that, there's the little moment with Wild Bill, where you know, Wild Bill's kind of telling him, you know, you've done everything you can, just put on a good show. And just even the little reactions he has in all of that, of his, like, acceptance of this moment, the opportunity, the stress, all of it, um, just... Like you feel like he's he's like made it to a different level as an actor in season two than he's ever been before. Having seen him in 10 seasons of television, a few movies, this is like him like 
maturing as, as an actor, but all of it leading then into the final match where everything goes great and like an incredible show, great drama, everything. And he, he wants to end it with a big gigantic bang and be that person his dad never said he said he could never be. He pulls off the maneuver. He does it. And he's injured in the process. And he's on the mat, slowly having to accept that, oh crap, I broke myself. I messed up. My dad was right. I shouldn't have done it. And that the way that his dad has that power over him, just nothing can free him from it. From all of it. The responsibility, the weight. uh, Just that's a burden that's on his shoulders. Even after his death, even as he forges his own way as best he can, his dad's still there in his head. And so he does the thing. He actually pulls it off. And then still, his dad was right. And just and you see the look on his face and you get kind of like the more dramatic, tear-filled, just, just devastation. And you get all this stuff that I like, haven't seen this version of Stephen Amell before. Like there's a lot of emotion and sorts of things in Arrow. I don't think you've gotten anything that this was just this, this real and raw of just emotion. Someone deeply trying to make their dead father proud while hating their dead father, while trying to do their own thing and making mistakes all along the way and processing all of it. The, easily the best stuff that we, we've seen from him. Just in general, on the, the plot of the season, that they, using Gully, having Gully come in and use the actions of the previous season as the shrewd businessman that he is to also realize, Hey, I hate Jack. Jack hit me. That means I have leverage over Jack and wouldn't be cool if we took the new momentum they have and merge it with what we're doing. That it makes Goli seem much more compelling than just the first season, but a couple of years since I watched it, but made it come off like, sure. He's the big promoter, but it's just all through shock and being way over the top and pouring more money into it. And then this season really makes him out to be the shrewd businessman that understands, recognizes talent, recognizes opportunity. And so first episode of the season, Crystal wins the belt. He sees it as as an opportunity to be like, really? A girl beat all of like five foot tall, hundred pound girl defeated six foot four, 240 pounds of muscle ace. Like what's going on here? Come on. And so he you know, uses that to put them down. But then when it make, becomes clear, people love her. He goes, oh, here's our opportunity. She's talent. She, this wasn't just a, a stupid gimmick from a hack. This is someone that really has talent that people love. And so it kind of comes up with this big, gigantic scheme. And I love that they, they keep showing him like with his daughters. And you, you realize like, oh, he, he's just like a normal guy at home. Like he's not a jerk husband. They don't present him as this lunatic jerk to everyone. No, he's just a shrewd businessman. Okay, well that that's a little bit more reasonable. Okay, I, I got that. Tracking along with that. So there's just a number of things like that where they change up just en- just enough to to make it um, better. And that that then of course the other opportunity in here I've got to hop off very quickly because I have that phone call I just talked about in three minutes. And adding this other element of this promoter or streaming service looking for their sports outlet wanting to get into wrestling fun that they picked a guy that was a villain on arrow to be the guy to do this and i don't know if that was intentional there's any connection or just you know there's only so many actors out there and they just ended up on the same show or whatever but that they add in this element that there's someone trying to recruit or trying to i don't know recruits the right word for an organization but trying to acquire some of these organizations and they go to look at it and they realize I like both of these. There's there's something there's something slick about what Gully's got, and it's built out and it has funding. And there's something very, just hometown family oriented about what the Spades are doing. Both of these are really cool. What if we could get both of them? But we're not really telling. But it's not a, really a competition between the two of them. We like both of them. We want both of them. Just adds that interesting other level to where you can have all of these moments of victory with the spades and then the revelations that give you the gut punch that sets you back. You're like, you're like, 
well, this thing's, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. And then between goalie and between these opportunities, it pulls it back, pulls it back. And you just get all of these emotions tugging at your insides all throughout the whole season. And then they keep using that also to, to show the different lives that Jack's dad, how he sabotaged himself through his ego, how he almost had his moments and then didn't. You can see how the way that they shunned Wild Bill and abandoned Wild Bill set Wild Bill off to go off and have all this success, but also always feel like he was the guy that was abandoned. He has his, he had all the success that King Spade never had, but lacked the family side to it, the, the grounded side to it. So he's just this guy that just never kind of grew out of it. And they just make everyone more human, more broken, and have all these contrasts of the good and bad way to do things and the downside to each one of them. So it's never clean and simple. It's never good and bad, but it's lots of big emotions. So I, I just thoroughly enjoyed this season. Absolutely got me hooked to her. It was like, my wife was out of town the last couple of days. And so as soon as she flew back into town, it was like, I like pulled it up, like ready to watch, ready to watch it. Finally, we can watch the finale. And, and she's, you know, not like, you know, doesn't review stuff like I do. And we're in the middle of watching the episode. And she's like, she just tweets out about Stephen Amell. She's never been like a gigantic, you know, Stephen Amell fan or anything like, like, like obsessed with these shows like I have been. But she's watching like, right, he's so good. Like she was there when I watched Arrow episode one, season one, years back. And she's like, feels that says, oh, wow. wow it's like he's really growing and maturing in this. So anyway, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm nervous it's going to get canceled because the ratings dropped a lot. Reported ratings dropped a lot from the last season and they weren't able to promote it. It, it just felt like it kind of got forgotten in the mix. A lot of people enjoyed season one, but it's like, oh, yeah, what's there? What season two come out already? Even when I tweeted about it, several people mentioned, oh, yeah, I love season one. I haven't gotten around to season two yet. I think there's a lot of people in that category. And even hopefully this review will remind some people to go watch it. But um Man, I hope it continues on, especially they end on a note where Jack's jacked up. They put on a great show. The acquisition seems like it absolutely could happen. And then he's laying there with Gully mad at him for not doing it right. But he literally got hurt. Why would Gully be mad at him about that? That's not a different reason to violate the rules if you literally broke your back. Anyway, I'm a minute late to my phone call. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought down below. If you haven't watched Heels, go check it out and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.